Hey, you guys trying to play hide and seek today? Sure. Yeah. 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 Okay, let's go down to the field house. Hey, okay. So Like a stir fry, whip it in the kitchen, wrist it just like a stir fry, whip it in the kitchen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten seconds later. Where is everybody? MHS and welcome to the first Friday show of 2019. I'm Sierra Harris and while we hope everybody had a good holiday break, we here at PNN are ready to get back into the swing of things. We know that many of you enjoyed several hours of Netflix during your break, but there is one movie that seems to have captured all of the attention. Here's Angel with her take on the Netflix original Bird Box. Hey there MHS, I'm Angel Highball and there's no way I'm taking this blindfold off or I will die. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Over Break was a movie that came on Netflix called Bird Box. That was harder than I thought. Anyways, it's about a mysterious forest that destroys the population, and only one thing is certain. If you see it, you will die. The survivors must avoid coming face to face with the entity that takes the form of their worst fears. Searching for hope, in a new beginning, a woman and her children embark on a dangerous journey through the woods and down the river to find the one place that may offer sanctuary. To make it, they'll have to cover their eyes from the evil that chases them and complete the trip blindfolded. Sandra Bullock is the main character playing Mallory, a woman who was living with her sister and is pregnant, fighting for survival after mysterious entities appear all over. There were two children she had to take care of that she named Boy and Girl. Mallory ended up finding safe shelter before anything happened to her. The household also contains other people such as Greg, the owner of the house, Douglas, Greg's neighbor, Tom, a construction foreman, and Charlie, a supermarket worker, who all face fates that you just have to see to believe. Later on, there were a few more people that found shelter, including Olympia, who is girl's mom, then came a cop in training named Lucy and a drug dealer, Felix, along with an elderly lady, Cheryl. It seemed as though everyone who laid their eyes on the mysterious entities immediately commits suicide, while the audience tries to figure out why. Eventually, they end up needing food and going to Charlie's store to survive, and they end up taking Greg's car to go to the supermarket. People who are infected are obsessed with trying to get others to look at them, which is extremely dangerous. The dangerous person, Gary, is led in the house and seems to be a survivor, while Mallory and Olympia were both giving birth upstairs at the exact same time. Gary picks up the birdcage, puts it in the fridge, and pulls out weird pictures. Yes, Mallory has been persuaded to take her and the children's blindfolds off, 
but that never happened. Eventually, they all end up in a boat trying to find help and shelter with their blindfolds still on. What happens at the end? You will have to tune in to Netflix to find out. Outside, you guys. My children are out there. You won't make it to your children. Oh, dude, it's back on. Turn it up, turn it up. The president has declared a state of emergency and has closed all borders. Do not. Do not go outside. Avoid social media. Use radio. I personally enjoyed this movie and would recommend it for those who haven't seen it yet. I promise you will enjoy every scene there is, but you may have those moments when you might get scared or worried like I did. I guess I feel safe now. Maybe. Overall, this is definitely a five-star film. Check it out if you like thrillers. Signing off from PNN, I'm Angel Highball. Speaking of movies, David is back, and this time, he's bringing you his most anticipated movies of 2019. Hey, MHS, I'm David White, and wow, can you believe it's already 2019? With the new year finally here, we are all excited about the new upcoming movies that are expected to premiere this year. Many big-time movie productions, including Disney, Marvel, Universal Pictures, and Blumhouse Productions are going to be our distributors. With that being said, let's take a look at the top five most anticipated movies of 2019 that had the media going crazy. Number five is Glass. With actors Samuel L. Jackson and Bruce Willis, this movie is bound to be a full-on thrill ride, being almost a trilogy from 2000's Unbreakable with the same actors in 2016's Split, this movie adventures through a world of a superhero with its own twist. David Dunn, played by Bruce Willis, breaks out of a mental facility to stop the psychotic Kevin Crumb, played by James McAvoy who breaks out of a prison to seek out high school cheerleaders he captures and holds hostage. David seeks out to find and kill Kevin to put an end to his murderous ways. Many people who saw the trailer seek to Twitter and Instagram to post about the hype they have over Glass, which actually comes to theaters next week on the 18th. You don't want to miss this one. Making another spot on the list is Toy Story 4. I am beyond excited for this movie to drop. Toy Story for me was my childhood. Woody, played by Tom Hanks, and Buzz Lightyear, played by Tim Allen, gets a new friend named Forky, played by Keanu Reeves. They spark on yet another adventure to introduce Forky into the real world. Set to release in theaters June 21st, I am super excited to witness another crazy ride taken by Woody and his toy pals. The third most anticipated movie is Happy Death Day to You. The original movie, Happy Death Day, I honestly thought was going to be pretty lame, but it was actually really interesting and a good film overall. The overall gist is that a college girl named Tree Jeltman, who is played by Jessica Roth, experiences the same cycle of events every single day. She soon realized that something weird is going on and that she is literally replaying the day of her death every day. She also finds out that she is being chased after a masked murderer, which is the one killing her. Still reliving the same day, she seeks to find out who the murderer is and to put an end to this everyday cycle of events. In this sequel, the same events happen and she relives the same day every day, except this time it is one of her friends who is being murdered and she is reliving their death day with them every single day. This movie is being hyped all over Instagram and many fans mark the date February 14th in their calendars to be the first ones to purchase that movie ticket including myself. Marking number two is Avengers Endgame and oh my goodness have I been waiting forever for this. <sighs> With the trailer being released last month, Marvel fans are going crazy on social media about possible outcomes, predictions, and so on within the movie. There were literally fan pages made about this movie and even reaction videos on YouTube over the trailer. Fans are going ballistic, including myself. I cried watching the trailer, not even gonna lie, but it was tears of joy, but whatever. Anyways, Thanos, the main enemy of the Avengers team, has completed his quest and wiped out 50% of the universe. Now at peace, he lived somewhere throughout the universe and became a farmer, believe it or not. With the Avengers team down and grieving over lost friends and family, they do everything they can to finally defeat Thanos and try to somehow reverse the effects and bring back the 50% that has been wiped out. April 26 needs to get here faster because I literally can no longer wait anymore for this movie and my fellow Marvel fans can attest to that. 
finally, the most anticipated movie of 2019 is The Lion King. <sighs> Originated in 1994, this film has become Disney's most iconic and most recognized film. It is also the ninth highest grossing animated film of all time. I'm sure everyone is familiar with the storyline, but with the death of his father due to his jealous uncle Scar, little Simba has to learn the ways of being a king by self-exploration and going on an adventure with two pals named Taiman and Pumbaa. On the adventure, he meets a lover named Nala. All in all, Simba finally meets with his uncle Scar and realizes it is Scar's fault for the death of his father and they battle it out. Many people are familiar with the animated version, but Disney is making a live version for the 2019 remake with many popular voices such as Donald Glover as Simba, Seth Rogen as Pumbaa, James Earl Jones as Mufasa, and guess who's playing Nala? The one and only Beyonce Knowles. This cast of well-known actors and singers are going to nail this remake and I cannot wait until July 19th to see if it is worth all the hype. 2.9 million tags were made about this movie on Instagram and as soon as people found out Beyonce was voicing, my Twitter kept blowing up with tweets about it. People are really excited for this remake, so come on Disney, stop making us wait and just give us the movie now, please? 2019 will be the year of spectacular movies that will keep everyone talking for years to come. With all the hype that's going on over these movies, let's just hope it was worth making tons of tweets and Instagram posts about them. Signing off for PNN, I'm David White. Another thing that has captured our attention is the NFL playoffs. With the Bears being knocked out in devastating fashion, only eight teams remain. Who will capture the elusive Lombardi Trophy? Football fans will have a clearer picture after this Saturday's games. With the NFL playoffs in full swing, the teams have come down to the final four on each side of the bracket. On the AFC side, Tom Brady and the New England Patriots face off against Phillip Rivers and the Los Angeles Chargers, while Andrew Luck and the Red Hot Colts face off against MVP candidate Patrick Mahomes and the number one seed Kansas City Chiefs. All right, this weekend uh, in the playoffs, I think uh, I think there's going to be one upset only of all the uh, of all the teams that are favored. I think that uh, the Colts are going to go to Kansas City and beat the Chiefs. I think the Patriots will uh, will will win at home, and, and it'll be old school like when I was in high school. It'll be the uh, the Colts versus the Patriots um, in the AFC Championship. I'd, I'd never bet against Tom Brady, and I think the uh, Chiefs. They've got a little bad luck going on in their playoff history at home. They got a rookie quarterback. Their defense isn't all that great. Um, so I'm going to go with that one. Chiefs and Patriots. Uh, bottom line, Chiefs are better than the Colts. Patriots are better than the Chargers. And the Patriots are the Patriots. It's going to be my Colts. Because we just like. Because <laughs> look, look, look is more experienced than Mahomes. They got better defense than them. And like, they just on a roll right now. And then I say the Chargers because <laughs> because Phil Rivers he got to get a Super Bowl. The gotta, they right, they got a better team than the Patriots, and they, and Phil Rivers trying to get a Super Bowl. So yeah, so it's gonna be Colts and Chargers. Yeah. Now I think for the AFC Championship it's gonna be yeah, it's probably Chiefs and. I want to say Chargers, but it's tough because Colts good and Patriots, they still holding it down. But I'm with Chiefs to win that, just saying. For this coming weekend, since my Bears aren't in it and I can't predict them to win, uh, I'm going to go with the straight home teams for both the NFC and AFC. So I think it's uh, New Orleans, uh, the Rams, the Chiefs, and the Patriots. Uh, home field advantage plays a significant role in football, and I just think that they're the better, better of the four teams, four of the eight teams. On the other side, Nick Foles and the Eagles are coming off a huge upset against the Chicago Bears, face off against Drew Brees and the number one seed New Orleans Saints, while Ezekiel Elliott and the Dallas Cowboys face off against Todd Gurley and the Los Angeles Rams. On the NFC side, I think the favorites are going to win. I think uh, the uh, the Saints with with Drew Brees, 
I think they'll breeze past the Eagles, although the Eagles, you know, got pretty lucky and beat the Bears. I think the Saints are uh, are going to be too much. And then the Rams against the Cowboys, I think they just got too much offense. I don't think the Cowboys have enough to uh, to be able to score on those guys. It's going to be uh, New Orleans and the Rams. Um, bottom line, the Eagles were lucky to beat the Bears. Darn it. And uh, the Rams are better than the Cowboys. Some have their thoughts on which running back is the best left in the playoffs. The best running back in the playoffs, I would say, is uh, Ezekiel Elliott. He just seems to be an all-around back, and he just seems to be the reason why the Dallas Cowboys are still left in the playoffs. The best running back in the National Football League, hands down, uh, that's left is Ezekiel Elliott. He's the best. I mean, so the four teams left, Ezekiel Elliott, Ezekiel Elliott, sorry, is the best. It's probably Zeke because he the best runner out of all of them. No, not Kamara. It's Zeke because Zeke, he led the league in rushing yards. And yeah. Many people have their opinions on young quarterbacks and older quarterbacks. This particular year, hands down, I'm going with the experienced quarterback, and that's going to be Drew Brees uh, and, uh, and um, Tom Brady. Got to go with the experience on them, too. So I think that there's actually a combination of, um, I, of quarterbacks that are young and experienced that are really good in here, and I don't have a great answer for you. I guess uh, I went to Purdue. I could never go wrong with Drew Brees. Uh, he's pretty old, but he was pretty much the MVP this year. Patrick Mahomes was also really good. He threw a bit more interceptions, but I guess my money would be on Drew Brees. As far as what uh, what player has the best chance, uh, whether it's an experienced or an inexperienced quarterback, you know, if you look at the playoffs, uh, you know, it's kind of a mixture of both. You know, I think uh, I think the best team, you know, there uh, is New Orleans. You know, and, and obviously Drew Brees has been around a really long time. Obviously Tom Brady keeps making it to the Super Bowl. Doesn't always necessarily win it. And until somebody can beat those guys, I'm not going to bet against them. Quarterback with experience because they got experience. Hopefully you can tune into one of the games this weekend and see who wins. Signing off from PNN, I'm Nico Jukic. Finally this week, the entertainment world is stinging from the loss of two television icons. Mean Gene Okerlund and Bob Einstein are two names you may not be familiar with, but are sure to recognize. In the beginning of 2019, two well-known celebrities unfortunately passed away. Many may not know their names or who they were, but your grandparents or parents should be familiar with these two fallen angels. On January 2nd, 2019, Gene Okerlund, aka Mean Gene, unfortunately passed away at the age of 76. The cause or location of his death were not given out. He left a major legacy as being a well-known professional wrestling pitchman announcer, interviewer, and host. Okerlund was best known for his work in the World Wrestling Federation, now known as WWE, and World Championship Wrestling. I think his legacy is super great. I mean. Everybody knows him from when they were a kid and you know his interactions with Hulk Hogan and all the other wrestlers. I mean there's not a wrestling fan that doesn't know about, well you know Mean Gene or let me tell you something brother. You know and that's Hogan talking to Mean Gene. Okerlund left an impact on many sport entertainment fans and was popular through many generations. Mrs. Zittich is another fan who reflects fondly on Mean Gene. Uh, mean Gene's career was amazing. Um, he definitely sparked the interest of a lot of wrestling fans in the early 80s, mid 90s. I mean. His charisma, his just his overall appearance, and just how he presented the material and like interviewed the, the wrestlers was top notch and way ahead of his time. And um, you know, see a lot of people try to mock that nowadays and try to act like he did or be as enthusiastic, enthusiastic as he was. But most people can't match that, and um, he really changed the game, and that's what it's all about. Um, his fans are going to be, I would assume, ride or die with them. Um, I'm sure they're sad by the, his passing, but you know said he's always going to be remembered for what he did and how awesome he was and and that's something you'll never forget along with another unfortunate death writer and actor bob einstein sadly lost his life to cancer on january 2nd after kicking off the new year by making his own name in the 60s einstein was truly defined for his famous character super dave osborne all right i think i'm 
I'm all right, Mike. I hurt my left arm a little bit, and uh, I got a little headache, but as long as I can get my car in position, I'll be all right. I got to get the back wheels up top, and then I'll swing her on in. There we go. All right. Good landing. And now it's home free right now. The steering wheel is pushing me back a little bit, but I'm okay. I'm in the behold. Uh, when I found out that uh, Bob Einstein, a.k.a. Uh, Super Dave, a.k.a. Marty Funkhauser uh, from Kirby Enthusiasm died, uh, I was surprisingly sadder than I thought it was going to be. You see these guys on TV, you don't really think too much about them other than that they're entertaining, and it's you don't realize how uh, how important they were to TV and to your entertainment until they uh, they die. With these devastating tragedies, I hope and believe everyone else wants these two fallen legends to rest in peace while they live on through everyone's lives they've changed. Signing off from PNN, I'm Andrew King. Thanks for joining us this week, and don't forget to tune in next week to a brand new edition of The Friday Show. 2019 is off and rolling, and we hope everyone has a great weekend. Oh, and special shout out to Mr. Nixich and the CRC crew for letting me host. Signing off of PNN, I'm Sierra Harris.